Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the FIDE Grand Prix 2022. It's Hikaru Nakamura versus Alexander Grishuk uh, and it's, uh, well, just a very nice King's Indian defense game with um, uh, Sasha playing the King's Indian and Hikaru playing against the King's Indian, which is very enjoyable. We all know how strong Hikaru is in the King's Indian, but this is classical. Let's see uh, what happens. So Hikaru uh, with the white pieces opens with d4. We have knight to f6. Uh, c for g6, knight to c3, and bishop to g7. The king's Indian defense is on the board. Uh, we have e4, uh, the no normal stuff here. We have d6, bishop to e2, and uh, Grishuk castles. And here Hikaru plays bishop to e3. Uh, this is the so-called uh, Averbach system, maybe paying a tribute to the to the old grandmaster who just turned 100, but also maybe it's just his favorite line, so maybe it has nothing to do with that. So here we have e5, standard reply, asking white, uh, are you maybe interested in a nice queen trade and the white of course grabs more space with d5. Uh, we have knight to a6 by Grishuk and now Hikaru just strikes with h4. Uh, interestingly g4 here is uh, far more played than h4 even though h4 kind of makes more sense you want to push that pawn to h5 but you will at some point play g4 as well so and maybe it's uh, you know a, a little bit of both but Hikaru prefers a h4 and now just knight to c5 we are going after the e4 pawn so Hikaru has to waste the move defending it with queen to c2 uh, and now c6 uh, attacking Hikaru's strong center and Hikaru ignores this he continues attacking with h5 we have cd5 uh, c captures on d5 and now queen to a5 saying that uh, okay you you really have nothing here uh, I'm, I'm pinning your knight so uh, everything uh, uh, you know could just explode if you allow me this capture on e4 but Hikaru plays h6 attacks the bishop here on g7 bishop to h8 and now he wastes one move again uh, defending the position with f3 and now you can see that his pawn uh, is all the way to h6 he has a very strong uh, center here his king is still in the center of the board so uh, you know, really, really uh, exciting stuff happening here. Uh, bishop to d7 uh, and now rook to b1. Here Hikaru is preparing b4 to win material here uh, and knight to a4 now. Attacking the pinned piece, we have queen to d2 and now knight captures on c3. Hikaru captures with the b pawn, we have b captures on c3. Now the b7 pawn is hanging and uh, Grishuk defends it with queen to c7. And uh, up until this point, this is known territory. There is even a game from 2019 Bundesliga between Pavel Ilyanov and um, Demchenko, uh, where the uh, game continued with c4, and that game ended in a draw. But here we have uh, g4 by Hikaru, and it is now as of move 17 that we have a completely new game. And... Um, Okay, g4 seems very aggressive, but it's not like you can continue attacking g5, the knight moves, and that's it. You don't have any uh, any more pawns to push. So how will this continue? Well, bishop to c8 first, uh, adding a defender here, so now the queen can move, but maybe also you're pl planning to play b6. So knight to h3 by Hikaru, knight to d7, and now knight to f2, bringing the knight to d3. We have knight to f6, uh, sorry, not knight, bishop to f6, uh, maybe... Uh, trying to get Hikaru to push that pawn all the way to g5, but Hikaru just castles here. So it seemed like Hikaru was attacking the king side all along, but uh, now he castles king side. And uh, well, what will happen now? The center is pretty much closed, uh, unless we see something like c4, c5. Here it's uh, you know about to remain about to remain closed. And uh, will the game shift to the queen side, or will there be some sort of a breakthrough on the king side? So here we have bishop back to e7. King to h2 by Hikaru and now knight to c5. Uh, we have knight to d3 offering a trade of knights and just b6 uh, strengthening the knight here. But Hikaru trades on c5. Knight captures b captures and now uh, he plays f4. And now interestingly even though uh, Hikaru also castles on the king side uh, there doesn't seem to be a good way to prevent um, uh, white from advancing those pawns. Of course uh, uh, Grishuk captures on f4. We have bishop captures and bishop back to d7. Uh, again connecting the rooks but now uh, c4. And here uh, we have rook a to b8. Uh, and the rook a to b8, uh, just uh, claiming the b file for your own rook, um, 
uh, countering White's rook on b1 is very impressive, uh, but uh, uh, Grishuk uh, really doesn't mind if Hikaru just puts the queen on c3. So maybe instead bishop to f6 is a little bit safer, uh, but... Uh, uh, Sasha, of course, knows what he's doing, uh, and he's, uh, it's only move 26, I believe he's uh, now below 10 minutes, probably. Uh, I know he was extremely low on the clock here, because Hikaru played, like, the first 15 moves uh, uh, with um, uh, more than an hour and a half on the clock, so he had uh, positive time, <laughs> uh, whereas Grishuk spent uh, more than an hour, so, uh, as usual, Sasha do is doing his thing. Uh, we have queen to c3, Hikaru, of course, says, all right, I'm threatening checkmate, and, uh, of course, f6. We are preventing this. Rook to b3, saying, okay, I'm gonna play rook to b1, double up here, and if you capture, I'm going to um, uh, connect my pawn structure here. So, rook to b6, Sasha considering the same, and now we have g5, and now you can see that it's impossible to uh, stop the those pawns from breaking through because, uh, well, if you captured queen g7 is just checkmate. So here uh, we have rook to f7. Now you are, uh, well, just welcome to capture because the rook is guarding the g7 square. And now bishop to c1, not only adding more pressure to the f6 square, but we are shifting this bishop over to b2 and then the bishop and queen will also have access to the h8 square. So queen d8, now comes the bishop to b2. Of course, that's what we were planning. Queen to f8. Uh, and now king to g2 before opening up the position uh, we get our king to a little bit of a safer square also adding another defender to the rook here if the position opens up so bishop to d8 uh, and now comes queen to f3 uh, so what can you play here? Uh, well, the problem with f captures on g5, even though it seems like such a nice move, because now you're also attacking the queen, this is probably what Hikaru was planning, is uh, queen back to c3, and this is very annoying. Uh, and now, uh, if you play rook captures on f1, we can play queen to h8 with check, if king to f7, queen captures on h7 with check, king e8, queen captures on g6 with check, and finally after queen f7, we can easily trade here, captures, captures, and now just rook captures on b6, h captures, and bishop to h5, and now the rook cannot move, and h7, uh, h8 will just win the game, if you unpin, we're gonna capture the rook, and h7 wins the game, as the bishop covers the uh, h8 square, if bishop here, of course, we just trade and bring a queen into the game, so that's the idea, uh, after queen to c3, if you just uh, play rook captures, on f1 but if you play bishop to f6 then we just win the piece because uh, well black simply does not have uh, enough defenders so that's why you can't open up the position just yet so here bishop to c8 a very important uh, defending move um, uh, by Grishuk because he knows uh, the position will open up and that the, this king will have to go for a nice walk and you do not want your king stuck here you want to uh, have the d7 square free for your king so that's the idea uh, and uh, also maybe if this rook moves he has some plans of maybe bringing this rook over to help out with the seventh rank but i think it's mostly just a um, uh, you know, uh, uh, allowing the king to escape. So now queen to e3, getting the queen away from the f-file, and now comes rook captures on b3, a captures, and finally f captures on g5. It seems like uh, you really shouldn't do this, but now Sasha says that it's okay to, to walk the plank here. So queen to c3, uh, going for that queen to h8 checkmate, uh, he captures on f1, uh, queen to h8 with check, now the, the difference is, um, uh, fr from that line that we've shown, the bishop is on c8, not on d7, so the king can cross this, uh, but also it's, it's just very interesting, because after king f7, queen captures on h7 check, king to e8, queen to g6 check, king to e7, uh, not uh, king to d7 right away, because then just bishop captures on f1, and it's, uh, well, just very silly. So instead, king to e7 was played, uh, but now comes queen captures on g1. Uh, the idea is that uh, if, if you capture, for example, the bishop, bishop captures on f1, there's this very nasty bishop to h3 check. Uh, Sasha just full of tricks here, king captures, queen captures on f1, and now no longer Hikaru has anything. But Hikaru, so through, right through this, he plays queen captures on g5 with check, uh, and now... Uh, it seems like king to d7 is what you want to play, but even this uh, will not help uh, Grishuk, because if king d7, there's this bishop g4 check. King c7, queen to g7 check, and now there's really nothing uh, nothing left. If king b8, we're going to capture here after rook captures, just bishop captures on c8, and that's it. King captures h7, and again, uh, you are just bringing a queen into the game. 
uh, no stopping this. If you play bishop here, we just capture, still guard the h8 square. It doesn't matter if rook here, queen comes into the game with check, picks up the rook. So that, that will not work. So instead, after queen to g5 check, rook to f6 was played. Uh, but now, again, uh, the position is completely winning for Hikaru. Uh, we've reached move 40, so time control has been reached. Both players now have sufficient time on the clock. But there is one move that wins the game and only one move. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Hikaru. Well, I give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, spotting this brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is king to... No, I'm just kidding, of course. It is pawn to h7. That's the winning move. And, uh, well, now they're simply not much you can do here uh the queen can't really move uh if you try something like queen to h8 we can just capture here after queen captures the bishop captures uh the h8 square will always be uh, ready for our uh, for our pawn to become a queen so here uh Grishuk finally played king to d7 but now hikaru just played queen to g8 uh, as again this is the only winning move and it was in this position on uh, move 42 that alexander Grishuk resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, so really, really impressive game by Hikaru so far in the tournament. Uh, it's still unknown who will win this uh, uh, this uh, group uh, as he has the same amount of point as, points as Yesipenko and tomorrow he's playing Yesipenko. Yesipenko will have the white piece, Hikaru will have black. So we'll see uh, how that uh, uh, turns out, but should be should be very interesting. So here, there's really nothing after rook to f2 check. You have this one check and that's it. No more moves for black. Whatever you do, well, we can just play h8 queen or capture the queen, then h8 queen, everything is winning. Uh, so of course, uh, Grishuk resigned. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Another very impressive victory by Hikaru, who not only plays uh, a great King's Indian, but also, as you've seen, uh, plays great against the King's Indian uh, defense. Uh, so yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it once again. I would like to thank uh, the Hoodie Knight, uh, God, for making me an atheist. John Anderson, uh, sorry about that. Uh, in this position, feel free to pause the video. And Jonathan Kemp for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the FIDE Grand Prix uh, until it ends. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.